This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. In the valley, I know that you're with me. Surely, your goodness and mercy follow me. So my weapons, praise and thanksgiving. This is why I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Yeah, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. And this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. And this is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. Yeah. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. And I'm so glad this morning that we are surrounded by Jesus, though it looks like we're surrounded by so much else. And the way that we fight our battles here at Victory Church is through our praise and our worship. And we exist as a community to see people reconciled to God and to each other. And so again, good morning. Thank you for tuning in this morning. My name is Paul. I am absolutely privileged and honored to serve as pastor of Victory Church of Charlottesville. And I am grateful uh, to now be entering into this Advent season. Uh, Advent is the Latin word uh, for to come in the church. And it's, it's a, a celebratory time for Sundays leading up to the celebration of Christ's birth. 
And today, as a part of uh, that celebration, uh, I am simply doing the introduction, uh, the introduction to a brother and friend in Christ, part of our Victory Church community, Troy Savage, who is going to share with us, and uh, the prayer team here at Victory. We believe in the power of prayer. It's, it's, it's infused into who we are and what we do, and what better way to kick off this season than to pray with each other uh, and to even learn a bit more about how our prayer lives can be deepened. Um, and so with that, I want to introduce Troy and, and allow him uh, the time and space to share and the prayer team as well to join me in this Zoom stream to also share with us this morning. Troy Savage was born and raised in Ottawa, Ottawa, Canada, where he first accepted Christ. Um, he has a bachelor's degree in civil and in environmental engineering with minors in international affairs and public policy, finance, and computer science from Princeton University. He also completed master's degrees in environmental science and divinity from Yale. Troy is also the proud husband of who you just heard singing that amazing song, Chantel Savage, and he's also the father to Emmanuel Savage. He currently leads uh, uh, innovative projects as a project manager for a global engineering and sustainability consultancy. And here at Victory Church, Troy serves as the coordinator for the prayer team and uh, in doing so has stewarded efforts that would take too long to try to quantify or describe. But every day someone's praying for us as a Victory Church community, praying for our Charlottesville community and even more broadly. Every Monday night, they're inviting us to come and corporately pray together via phone from 8 to 8.20 p.m. And Troy has stewarded that since the inception of our ministry and much more. Sang in the Easter Choir some, uh, last year, if y'all remember that. And, um, and it's just has, he just has a servant's heart. He loves God and seeks to apply God's truth in all that he does. Uh, and I, for one, am incredibly grateful, as I know are you, to be in fellowship with him here at Victory Church. So let's thank God together. And let's show Troy Savage some love as he joins me or takes over rather the Zoom as I exit stage right. We love you, Troy. Amen and praise God. Uh, church, I know you are at home, but let's give a virtual or actual hand clap of praise to God uh, for Pastor Paul and Taylor uh, and their continuing stewardship of this ministry. Uh, God is great and he is greatly to be praised and we are thankful uh, so very thankful that that Pastor Paul and and Taylor have answered the call of God. Uh, while we are apart physically, I'm going to assume that we're really present together across both space and time. Uh, and yet, in some ways, it's helpful to be in a room alone here because the truth is uh, that I'm preaching this message to myself. Uh, if I had to title this message, I would call it "Thank God for Prayer." Thank God for prayer. Our scripture reading this morning will come from the book of Mark. Uh, we'll read Mark 9, starting with verse 2. Mark 9, starting at verse 2. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Skipping down to verse 14. When they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing about? He asked. A man in the crowd answered, teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. 
Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth and gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? Jesus replied, this kind can come out only by prayer. Let us pray. Well, with the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, be acceptable unto thee, our God, our rock, and our redeemer. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Amen. Well, it was 2006, church. Kirk Franklin's song Stomp was less than 10 years old then. Uh, and I was less than a month from marrying uh, the most beautiful woman in the world. Uh, my favor, if you please. And so I felt like I was on top of the world. But I had no job, no savings, and no place to live when the month was over. I was in trouble. You see, nobody would rent a place to someone without a job. And one day I found the perfect place to rent. It had hardwood floors, a one bedroom with so much room that it felt like a palace to me at a time, and only $800 a month when during the time of searching, I literally saw holes dug into real apartments that were renting for $800. We went to see the place. The best part was it was across the street from our church, a two minute walk to church, which was important to me at that time. The owner said, no job, no way. And hearing that after seeing the apartment, we immediately walked over to the church went to the prayer room and prayed and prayed and prayed for that apartment. I'm sure you've been in that place before, like I was, feeling so close to your breakthrough only to hit a barrier, feeling completely connected in a mere instant, but then it's seemingly coming crashing down and you're left helpless, disconnected, estranged. What is it about me? that I couldn't get that apartment, that you couldn't take a risk on me, that I was passed over. Why is this happening to me? Why is my community battling this? Why do I feel like I'm in a strange land? If we were honest with ourselves, honest beneath the fiction society tries to sell some of us, we'd recognize these moments perhaps now more than ever. Some people simply refer to this as 2020. Feelings of helplessness, disconnection, estrangements, where the moments of seeing transfiguration seem to be fleeting. Huh? In the text we read today, the disciples experienced all of this. Peter, James, and John were invited by Jesus up a high mountain. They are in their promised land, speaking their language and seeing Jesus begin to shine bright. And the ancestors come down, Elijah and Moses, in a voice saying, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. 
And the Bible says they are terrified, but I imagine it is a holy terror. And then they come down the mountain to a crowd arguing. Moment passed. And when Jesus asks what's going on, a parent steps forward and tells them that their child is possessed by an evil spirit. And that he brought the young boy for help and the disciples could not help. How did the simple needs of a child turn into an argument? The father that has, says that this has been happening since childhood, as long as he can remember. And he asks Jesus, if you are able, please help us. Jesus responds, all things can be done for the one who believes. I believe, screams the parent, help my unbelief. And Jesus commands the spirit to leave. And it does. Imagine the disciples as a group together, having seen Christ transfigured and virtually at the same time getting into arguments because they couldn't do the work. And so likely in hushed voices, certainly in private, they asked Jesus, why couldn't we cast it out? And in one of those great moments of truth, Jesus looks at them and says, this kind comes out only through prayer, comes out only through prayer. Wait, what? I mean, let's think about this for a moment. Obviously, the disciples prayed. I am pretty sure literally talking with Jesus qualifies. And in fact, the disciples in, in Mark 6 had cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Greek word here for prayer is plushouche. <laughs> and truth be told, I don't know Greek, but, but this is like in Acts 6.4 when it says, we will give ourselves continually to plushouche and to the ministry of the, the word. This is, is what we typically think of when we think of prayer. Some ancient manuscripts say prayer and fasting instead of just prayer. But let's assume here that Jesus really meant what he said, that this type comes out only through prayer. So if the disciples pray, but the, the, the insight that Jesus provides is simply that this type only comes out through prayer, then what is really going on? Perhaps this suggests that there are levels or, or depths of prayer. Perhaps Jesus is saying that there are depths of prayer that the disciples need to dig into. <laughs> How can I make this plain? Uh, I, I grew up and for many years into my 20s, I, I used to run uh, and I thought that I was in good shape. A few years later, my sister-in-law told me about a workout called Insanity. Uh, and I, so I turned on the tape to play Insanity. I still remember it to this day. I turned it on and I couldn't get through the warm up. I was working out that entire time, but there was a, a, a deepness and intensity of the Insanity workout that was something I had to get into. I had to dig into in order to, to, to make work. Oh, maybe a better way of making this plain for, for those of you who went to, 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 to college or to high school or, 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 or continued education is the idea of studying. For me, I remember I went to high school, I studied well, I did good, and then I went to college. Uh, and I did the same thing. I studied, but I found out that there were some tests that could only be passed through study. And I had to learn a new depth of study. I had to learn what people really meant when they said study, study. Oh, perhaps Jesus' comment here was about a depth of prayer. And like all prayer, I don't think he was necessarily talking about prayer for the particular situation but instead a faith promoting continual and continuous prayer that would cause us, would cause people to operate first in faith instead of in faithlessness. 
what is the depth of your prayer life with God? In this season of Thanksgiving, we are ever so thankful to God. And yet, beloved, I encourage you, no matter where you are, to press towards the mark and to push more into God in prayer. There are so many reasons why. You, you see, prayer is the substance and foundation of our relationship. With, with God. It's not peripheral. It is central. It is the central component of finding ourselves in God. Uh, and the solution to a lot of our challenges is in our deep and abiding relationship with God. For indeed, some things only come out through prayer. You know, perhaps the message of this text gets obscured because of the talk of demons. <laughs> and and, and in, in, in our context, it can sometimes be a difficult lens to consider the word. So very quickly, I want to share a trick that, that I use uh, in all things. I use the most useful lens I can find to understand the truth. So if the lens that is speaking of evil spirits is not helpful for our understanding, but a different one is, then use the different one as long as you reach the same place. And now in this case, for me, I happen to think the evil spirit lens is really useful, uh, but you may feel differently. So let's put this in different terms. What we know in the story we read this morning is that there is something that keeps a young person voiceless. It causes, it causes him continuing stress and makes him rigid. This something is continuously trying to destroy him and has for as long as his parents could remember. And no one's been able to do anything about it. The disciples have been able to get rid of other things, but not this. What does that sound like to you? I want you to name that spirit from your own experience. I like to say that we all have PhDs in our own experience, and, and therefore you might indeed have a PhD with this spirit. <laughs> and some of you have a literal PhD in this. And, and you've asked, or you've heard a mother or father of a child ask, or you've been the mother or father asking, why can't we fix it? You've tried everything and you couldn't fix it. Maybe the secret to casting this system, this spirit aside, is prayer. A deepening and continual walking and relationship with God. The, the truth is, in our relationship with God, anything is possible. And while you may not be able to see it and know it now, Maybe the solution can be revealed as we dive deeper and deeper and deeper into God. Maybe, maybe God is calling you. Maybe God is calling us not to work harder, not to argue with the crowd, but to really earnestly dig into God in prayer. Maybe God is asking you to pray until something happens, until something happens in you. Pray until you understand the possibility that exists in prayer. Pray until you realize that prayer is the creative force in the universe. Pray until we get beyond the words to the real idea and essence of our relationship with the one who created the universe. Pray until you discover your full being and your full self can only be discovered in prayer. 
Even now, as I speak inside of me, there are voices trying to tell me something else, that, that the prayer isn't the answer, that my relationship with God in prayer is as deep as it could be. In fact, everything in our world tells us that a deep, continuing, abiding life of prayer will not do anything. And so right now, everything inside of you too might be rejecting the idea that this kind can come out only through prayer. I already pray. But pray won't do anything. Uh, this situation isn't about prayer. <laughs> Frankly, in some cases, we've tried everything. Why not dig in to God in prayer? <laughs> because the truth of the matter is that the purpose of prayer isn't to cast out the demon. That's just a convenient result. God has so much more for us than that. The purpose of prayer is to discover ourselves in God so that we can be complete and so that we can walk in faithfulness. God loves us, but not coercively. God calls us, but not so loudly that we are overwhelmed. But that also means that everything else can drown out God's call. And so we answer God's call and allow him to speak into us and to reveal in us who we are called to be in prayer. And prayer is a virtuous circle. It takes practice to get to the depths of what God has for us in prayer, to overcome the false ideas uh, that prayer is easy and to have strategies to get started. And so as members from the prayer team join the call now, uh, as Audrey and, 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 and as, as Kate and as Erica join, I want to say that I'm so glad we have a prayer team here at Victory uh, that prays and practices prayer. Uh, we are not perfect. Uh, we are growing and continuing to grow in prayer and will continue on that path uh, indeed for all of our days. Uh, but our hope is, is that in digging in to, to God in prayer, that we can also help our community, the Victory community, dig in to God. Now, as they join a quick what I want to call theology break, everything tells us to, to act in this world instead of to be, uh, to do instead of to be grounded in the ground of being, to work instead of to faith. Uh, and yet the text that we read this morning is tailored to teach us that the nature of the universe is spoken by the word of God to a generation that apparently has flipped it around. The, the, the nature of the universe is that being precedes action, just as Christ's acceptance of us precedes our acceptability. Uh, and the core of our life and light is in the depths of our relationship with God. Uh, theology break over because they are here. I am so excited and proud to introduce to you Erica, Kate, and Audrey who are, are going to share with us their experience of, of how to dig in to prayer, of how they practice this, the, 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 this meaning and this method of continuing to dig deeper into prayer. Uh, I'm excited to introduce to you Erica Williams, who will, who will lead us first. Thank you, Troy. Uh, and good morning, church. I just want to say, Troy, thank you uh, for that encouraging word. Um, I'm particularly appreciative of how you reminded us to interrogate just the depth of our prayer life with God. So thank you for that, Troy. Yeah. Um, I wanna rift off of what Troy was saying by talking a little bit about overcoming the desire not to pray. So even though we're instructed to pray without ceasing as 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 reminds us, the reality is that there may be times when we, when we do not have a desire to pray. So those times or, or those situations could be, for example, I just wanna name a few, uh, could be because of sin, right? Um, perhaps there's a sin issue and you find yourself hiding from God. Maybe that's a barrier um, prevent, preventing, preventing you from prayer. And if that's you, then 
please understand this. Jesus can heal what you're hiding. Uh, he already knows about it. So don't allow sin to, to become one of those obstacles that prevents us from experiencing the fullness of God in prayer. Or in a similar vein, perhaps another barrier to prayer could be uh, that you feel distant from God. And maybe you think that he has abandoned you and cannot hear your prayers. Well, first of all, if that is you, I just wanna say I can relate to that. I don't always necessarily feel the presence of God. And while we may not always feel God's presence, understand this, God's promises do not depend upon our feelings. Rather, God's promises rest in his integrity. And that's a quote I'm paraphrasing from the late R.C. Sproul. So when we feel like we don't necessarily feel God's presence, remind yourself of Hebrews 13, verse 5, which says, God will never leave us nor forsake us. Remind yourself of that. We can take God at his word. Why? Because that is central to his core, to his nature. It's unchanging. He cannot lie. So whether our feelings say uh, tell us otherwise, we know that his promises, again, rest on his integrity, not our feelings. Or another reason or barrier to prayer could be that maybe prayer feels inadequate. Maybe it even feels like an action. So therefore, worry replaces our desire to, to pray. Well, if that is you, then I just want to say this, church. Remember this. Rest is a blessing given to us by God. The enemy wants us to be worried and to be preoccupied. Yet in the scriptures, we see that Jesus constantly went away. He retreated away from the multitudes to get alone and to pray. So if it was necessary for the son of God to retreat away so that he could pray, then how much more so is it necessary for us? Mm. So, as we, again, as I conclude, and as I try to encourage us uh, in terms of overcoming the desire not to pray, I just wanna say this. Please know that taking time alone with God is the best place to find your strength. Prayer is the most important conversation that you'll have today or any day. Take it to God before you take it to someone else. So join me now as we pray. Father God, I thank you for the language and the opportunity to come to you in prayer. Lord, I wanna pray specifically right now for those who have barriers that are preventing them from desiring to pray. Lord, I ask that you please remind them of the power that comes from connecting with you, the creator of the entire universe. Lord, help us to see prayer as an opportunity not to hide from your presence, but to be joined together with you in your presence. I pray that truth would resonate upon us. And I pray that each of us on this call, each of us listening today will have a desire to connect with you through prayer. Thank you for the prayer team, Lord. Thank you for the reminder that Troy provided with us from your word today, Lord. And we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Erica, thank you so yeah. much for helping us dig into prayer. Uh, next up, we are going to have Kate uh, share some strategies and suggestions. Thanks, Troy. Thanks, Erica. Uh, great to hear from everybody this morning. Uh, I got I to gotta say, first off, good morning to everybody, but um, it's such a gift to be able to come together in prayer. And so highly encourage anyone who's listening to uh, get on the Monday night prayer calls, join the prayer team if you want. This community is just, it's its so special uh, and it's really neat to, to hear each other's voices as we, you know, develop in prayer. But uh, to that end, I want to just share um, quick idea for a way to pray. And um, I was actually taught this method of prayer early on uh, in my spiritual walk by um, a, a friend. And um, her name is Jody Burton, actually. She writes about this topic, but it's called Praying the Scriptures. 
and um, have since been introduced to it in a lot of other capacities. Um, but it's a great way to actually um, be in the word and then to pray God's word, pray through God's word. Um, so I love this method because it's, it's a very, it's kind of a low threshold uh, for knowing what to pray. If you don't know what to pray, open up God's word and, and literally pray through the words, insert your name into verses, insert a friend's name into verses, and it allows you to even um, kind of inherently get into the will of God, pray the will of God uh, for your life or for someone else's. Um, it also kind of to Erica's point about overcoming, you know, it's a great way um, to help you keep going. If you're feeling spiritually dry, it, you know, it, it gives you what to say and can also just help with consistency in that way. So um, I even like to, you know, uh, just pair it with my daily devotional. So whatever I'm reading that that morning, um, I'm also praying through it for myself um, and for others. And it, it kind of, you know, I like to think of it as it, it kind of activates uh, God's word in your life. So I highly re recommend giving it a try. Um, and, you know, just to encourage you to be in the scriptures daily anyways, uh, to write them on your heart, uh, and then to pray God's word for yourself and for others. Uh, so with that, if you'll uh, pray with me now, uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word, which does uh, direct us, it rebukes us, it allows us to be corrected, Lord, we just pray, um, we pray for uh, your will in our lives, Lord. Uh, and even as uh, Troy read through Mark 9 today, Lord, I pray that um, that we would know that you have indeed given uh, your beloved son for each of us, Lord. And I pray that we would in our own lives listen to him, Lord. Uh, and I also pray, God, that you would help each person on this call uh, overcome our unbelief, Lord, uh, that we might walk in your way, in your will, uh, and to the glory of your name. And it's in Jesus' name I ask and pray these things. Amen. Hey man, awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Uh, Audrey's going to close us, close us out um, by talking about another way to dig into uh, God in prayer. Yeah, thank you, Troy, Kate, and Erica. Th those are all such encouraging words. Um, yeah, what I want to talk about is something I think we can forget, which prayer is speaking to God, but it's also listening, which is the other half of, you know, communing with the Father. And so I want to talk about listening prayer. Um, and just kind of an encouragement from God's word. God does speak to us through his word, but he also speaks to us through his spirit. Um, and so in John 14, 26, it talks about how, you know, Jesus is sending them the Holy Spirit who will be an advocate and will remind them the disciples of Jesus's words. And so he still does that for us now. Um, and something I've learned about listening prayer is that it's a chance to be still. Um, you get to allow God to speak to you. Uh, and it might be a word that he gives you, a, a phrase, an image, or a scripture itself. Um, and that doesn't mean that when we take that pause and listen, he'll always, you know, give us anything. But um, sometimes it can just be a chance to be still from all the busyness of life and wait expectantly before, before God. Um, and so, so it's been powerful in my own life to just get to experience that with the Father. Um, but whenever I was struggling to hear his voice, um, something I learned was to just remove distractions. Um, so whether that's just going to a quiet room in my house, closing the door, um, or actually going outside in nature because I really feel God's presence there, um, or just praying with other believers because that community is really powerful. Um, and yeah, whenever I'm uncertain of what God might be trying to say to me, um, I can go back to him and pray again for interpretation if I'm confused or unsure. Um, and then I also would ask another believer, you know, can you help me confirm this? Does this feel like it's from the Lord? Um, and I also hold it loosely because it's not, you know, directly scripture per se. And so just recognizing that I may not always hear clearly, but it's just an opportunity to kind of, yeah, play around with God and have fun too in your, in your time with him. Um, and finally, if you hear something from the Lord, it should always be loving and encouraging. So even if it's convicting you of something in your life, it is never condemning. Um, so I just want to remind you of that. It, is, it should always be lifting you up. Um, and so I just want to share a very brief example of a time and listening prayer I had with a student that I mentor and disciple. Um, and we were just kind of coming before God and asking uh, who um, she should reach out to in her sorority for Jesus to pursue, um, you know, a faith conversation with. Um, and so we both took a moment of silence and, you know, just were listening to God. And I heard clearly a name of someone I didn't know. Um, so I, I shared that with my student and her jaw just dropped because, 
it was actually a woman she'd been thinking about previously who'd been really struggling, you know, in, you know, mental health and her time with God. And so it was just this powerful experience of God kind of confirming something that she'd been hearing from the Lord and that, yeah, in me hearing that it encouraged her to want to pursue that, that girl. And so, yeah, just, that was an encouragement for me in my own life. Um, so yeah, right now I just want to pray kind of how I would, excuse me, enter that time of listening prayer. Um, and so I'll actually pause in my prayer right now um, and kind of demonstrating what that might be like for you. So pray with me. Lord Jesus, thank you so much that you speak to us through your word um, and you also speak to us through your Holy Spirit. Um, and so Jesus, I just pray that you would help us to be still before you, um, help us to calm and quiet our hearts um, to be able to remove the distractions and the noise of this world um, that so clamors for our attention. Um, and yeah, help us to, to pause and to be still to listen to your voice right now to what you might be saying to us personally or what you're saying to Victory Church um, just as a whole. And so, yeah, Lord, what do you want to say to us right now? Amen. Amen and praise God. Uh, it is an awesome thing to know and understand that there are depths of newness that we can discover in prayer. And I'm so thankful for our prayer team who teaches each of us different ways um, that we might see and approach and enter into prayer. The beautiful thing about the prayer team is that God speaks uh, to us and works with us in different ways, but the collective allows us to learn from one another. Uh, we don't have time to get into that conversation, but I want to let you know that this prayer team, there are others, these are the folks who were able to, to make it this morning, but this prayer team is praying for you as a community. Victory is praying for you by name. Now, th the truth is that your individual prayer life matters immensely. Uh, that this idea of, of, of walking and talking and moving into God in prayer is the foundational substance of our life. You know, I told you the story about, about to be being about to get married and having no place to no place to live, no job, no, no prospects and, and, and going and praying to God. And I will say that that, that was one of those demons that could be uh, cast out. Uh, that, that what actually happened is we didn't get that place I, I, I loved and thought about. Uh, but we got a place that was 20 minutes away, 20 minute walk, a perfect walk to church. I walked to church from there for three years. Indeed, we walked into the rental office. I walked up to, to, to who I call Liliana. Uh, and Liliana says, Troy, don't worry about it. I got you. And she filled out that paperwork and there was no problem. And we knew, Chantelle and I knew just two weeks before we got married that God sent us Liliana. Uh, uh, but there are some situations in our life that aren't about our specific prayer to God for a specific moment, but are about our deep, abiding, ongoing depth of faithfulness in our prayer life with God. Could it be this morning, Victory, that we are being called to that depth of prayer as a community? What would it mean for a community that is hurting? What would it mean for a community that is arguing instead of healing our children? What would it mean if we were a church who continued together, as Audrey said, to dive into God in prayer? If our individual prayer lives came together and we walked and talked and moved into God together. It's what we are doing as a community and it is what we are continuing to do. <laughs> right now, there's some structure around it. We are called to pray together explicitly as a community Monday nights from 8 to 8.20. We are called to pray together in community in our victory groups. If you're not in one, go ahead and join and then stick with it. You will be blessed, but more importantly, you will be a blessing to others. Uh, and we want to invite you to join this prayer team. Right now, I want to open up, because I'd remiss, be remiss if I didn't, the opportunity for those of you who may not have accepted Christ to accept the quiet call 
that God is placing on your life. A call to appreciate and to accept the fact that God accepted you even before you were acceptable and therefore God redeemed you. If you don't know Christ, if you haven't accepted him and you feel the tug on your spirit right now, don't think that's my voice, but recognize that is the call of God and simply answer the call. God, I feel you calling me and I accept your call. I believe that you sent your son to die for me to sacrifice so that I could be reconciled to you. And I commit right now to seek after you. There's another call this morning as we are talking about prayer, and that call is to come together as a community on the prayer line. Right now, there's four of us, but we hope that more will join us. In fact, we are calling our entire congregation, all of you who are listening live right now, to come on to the Zoom call. Even right now or in a couple of seconds, that Zoom link is being placed in your chat. You can see it. And just go ahead and join this call. Here's what we're going to do on the call. We're going to quickly pray together in community. Uh, then we will break into small groups. And if you want to, you can choose to pray with Kate or Audrey or Erica in a small group. And they will lead prayer into the specific area that they highlighted earlier. Uh, and then if you want, uh, and if you're looking for a time of one-on-one -on -one prayer, that option is available now. There's something powerful that happens when we come together as a community in prayer, victory, and in this season of Thanksgiving, we have the opportunity to come together and pray. Uh, so go ahead, if you want to, click on, click on that link in your Facebook feed. The Facebook live stream will, will, will go down in a moment, but we will be together praying together for our community. Come on and join us as I close in prayer. Oh, gracious and eternal God, we love you and we give you thanks, Lord. Lord God, we pray right now that you would teach us to pray, that you'd allow us, Lord, to discover not just the breadth, but the depth of prayer that you have for us. Or oh, call us as individuals, show us in community, allow us in so many ways, Lord God, to reach after you. Not Lord God, we exist to see our community reconciled to God and to each other. And Lord, we want to, as individuals and together collectively, walk into that vision. And we recognize that there are some things that only are cast out by prayer. And so, Lord God, because I want to discover more of myself, and because we together want to be a community that achieves victory, we pray, Lord God, that you would bind us together in prayer. Help us, Lord. Touch us, Lord. Touch the ones, Lord God, who are continuing along the journey of prayer and the ones, Lord God, who even today have accepted you and are just really getting started, Lord God. Help us to know you more. We love you, Lord, and we thank you, and we bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And praise God. Amen. Well, church family, thank you so much. We love you. We ask, Lord, we ask that you just keep on pressing into God in prayer, for indeed God has great things for us. To God be the glory for the great things that he is doing. Amen. And praise God.